again, it's Stacy, and we are here at Tamarack Point. And we're looking ahead for places and ways to look and listen for birds in your neighborhood. Well, if you happen to be able to get to a place where there's a well or a pond, it's a great place to go look and listen for birds. Why do you think? Well, usually if there's water, that means there's food. So whether it's insects that are hatching out of the water, or whether it's tubers and plants down in the water that the geese and the swans will go for, there's food. And there are even some birds who will nest right around a lake, like red-winged blackbirds. But I hear somebody behind me that is trying to get some attention. Let's listen for a minute to that song. through the woods and we passed by a few trees and they had holes in them. Why do birds peck holes in trees? Well, there are a few reasons. Birds peck on things to mark their territory. They peck on things to get food and they also peck holes in trees to nest in. So not only the woodpeckers, they're the primary ones who do the pecking, but also chickadees can do that too. Once, years ago, I watched a busy, hard-working chickadee go and take beakfuls, pecking into a tree to peck a hole, and every beakful, they would fly further away and drop though that sawdust and those wood chips and go back and forth so they didn't leave an obvious pile at the bottom of the hole. So behind me, you can see these nice poplars. You see that one? At the top, there is a hole that very well could be, or could have been, a nesting hole. Who might fit in it, do you think? Maybe a chickadee? Maybe a nuthatch? Mm, just maybe a downy woodpecker? Well, they're nice holes, nice and small. They're usually on, if a tree's leaning, they're gonna be on that underside of the tree or the tree branch, so that if it's raining or sleeting or snowing, their nesting cavity doesn't fill up with rain or snow, and it's a little bit more hidden and protected. And there's some other places, obviously, where this dead tree has been pecked away, and those holes and those chunks taken out is more to find food, to find insects that are either hibernating or living under that bark of the tree. So these dead holy trees are definitely good for something. They're good for nesting. We'll take a peek some other spots and see where else we can hear and find birds and how we can help them out in just a few. And I have two very special guests with me today. I have Harlan and Sue, two of our awesome Bluebird Nesting Box Recovery Project volunteers. So, Harlan and Sue, how often do you come check these nesting boxes? We come out once a week. Once a week. Okay, and what different kind of birds nest in these nesting boxes? Well, we hope that we'll get bluebirds, but frequently we get tree swallows, and the two can nest side by side. Uh, we can also get chickadees, and they nest early in the season. And we can also get house wrens, but they're not very accommodating for other birds. So. We try to discourage them because they will destroy other birds' nests. Okay, and I see that there are two nesting boxes close together. Why are there two? That's so that if one is taken by tree swallows, the tree swallows, being territorial, will drive off all the other tree swallows. It will leave this box here vacant, and we hope that this one will be taken by people. Right. And why? Why is it that we had to create? Uh, artificial nesting boxes. Eastern bluebirds' favorite territory years ago were tree uh, were orchards, apple orchards, okay. and and uh, cavities in, and, and holes and, and also trees. But there was a 
great deal of loss of habitat. So we've come back with nest boxes to try to help them come back and recover. All right, well, can we take a look inside? Yeah, let's see what we have in here. So it comes down. Okay, I've got a bluebird's nest and I have four bluebird eggs. All right. Let's see what it looks like inside there. Four eggs. Yeah. Last week there were only two. Okay. So, and how often do they lay another egg? Well, weekly. <laughs> yeah. So we had uh, we had one box last week which had a bluebird's nest in it, no eggs. Okay. This week there are four eggs. Okay. Wow. So yeah, we could have four or five eggs in a week. Nice. So, and you saw in that nest, it wasn't sticks, it was mostly dry grasses. And these nesting boxes are typically, they're placed on, right here, they're on the edge of a wooded area and an open grassland or a prairie. Yes, if its nest is all grass, we're pretty sure it's a bluebird. If it's all grass with feathers in it, then we're quite sure it's a tree swallow. Okay, and then and what is it? if it's all sticks. Yeah. That's the house wren. Then right. we're not happy. And then, isn't there another another bird that sometimes will nest in cavities that uses the green moss? Yes, and that's the most comfortable bird's nest <laughs> there is because they make a pad of soft moss about that thick. So if I were a baby bird, I'd want to be a chickadee. <laughs> <laughs> My a favorite. A chickadee's nest. Yeah. Yes. So they're all cavity nesters. So. We can look here in these nesting boxes, but as you go for walks out in your neighborhood or in, in Ramsey County Parks, look for dead trees that have holes in them about this size, about the size of maybe a golf ball or a small clementine, and that's going to be just big enough for any of those birds. So thanks to Harlan and yeah. Sue. And, and I'll just add one other word. Oh, sure. If anybody is taking a walk at the Samurai Nature Center, please do not try to open these boxes. Good. Yep, it's actually, uh, it, you can actually be fined for opening these boxes. It is part, a part of a very special recovery project. So do not disturb the boxes, do not go off the trails, just observe from the paths. Good point, Harley. Stay on the trails, spread out at least that six feet of an eagle's wingspan, and see who you can find in the grasslands, the prairies, and the forests. For, um, from us walking in the woods, the prairie, and by the pond, you can see there are a lot more birds out. Whether they're migrating through, or they're already back, or they're nesting, there are more birds out. And a lot of those birds are nesting or getting ready to nest, and that means there's going to be babies. And babies to feed, and that's going to take a lot of energy for the parents to be flying back and forth bringing food to them. Well those birds are going to need some extra energy and food themselves. So what do we have today? Ideas of how you can help birds in your neighborhood. So maybe you don't have a tube feeder hanging from a tree or hanging from a feeder post, or maybe you don't have the feeder stuck on your window. You don't have to necessarily have one of those. You just need some bird seed and some other household items. So for example, you know those extra pieces of bread that gets really dry that's been in the bag? Those are great for making a little bird treat. Take that piece of bread, pop it in the toaster, and then poke a hole in, in it, and then get your favorite thing that's nice and sticky that has lots of fat and calories on it to spread on the, the bread or the toast, whether it's some coconut oil, some shortening, some peanut butter or nut butter, and then smush some seeds or peanuts on there, poke a hole in the end of it, hang it with a string, hang it up, and see if the birds or the squirrels will eat it. Another thing you can do if you can, in your next grocery trip or grocery uh, pickup order, get some unflavored gelatin, and get out your favorite cookie cutters. The ones though with these little pieces don't work as well with this recipe. You want some basic ones, some basic shapes, whether it be heart shapes or leaf shapes or egg shapes. And you need a bowl, you need some water, 
maybe a spoon or a whisk and mix it all together. And then you're going to pour that over some seeds, mix them together, press them into some of these cookie cutters and poke a hole in before it chills in the fridge. And then you can have your own bird feeder. So hope you can get outside. And also don't forget, go try some of our other Ramsey County parks. We've got a ton. It's a great time of year to get out for some exercise at a distance, fresh air, look and listen for birds. And stay tuned, there may be some other fun activities to do that just pop up. All right, well, you can see that the birds are really busy this spring. And now it's your turn to get busy. Making some bird feeders for your neighborhood. And if you're in the area, come out to Tamarack. We invite you to come to Tamarack, visit our front kiosk, and there's going to be a map. We're going to, that map will send you to a spot where Shannon and I have set up a trail of painted bird rocks because birds rock. So they're going to be small. They're going to be hidden along the path. We ask you to leave them there. Don't pick them up, but see how many you can find. They're painted to look like eight different Minnesota birds. And at the end of the trail, after you've completed the whole path, at the end there's going to be a nice big pile of river rocks that you can take one home, decorate however you want. Put it in your garden, put it in your community garden. Use Sharpie markers or you can use a cheap acrylic paints. That's what we did um, with these. Uh, or you can use Sharpies or even crayons. You decide. But go ahead and do something fun with those rocks and get out and enjoy listening for the spring birds. See? Who's nesting? Maybe some good nesting places. Take care. Until next time.